Hello everyone, today I will be reading Beauty and the Beast Illustrated by Victor Traveris Retold by Louis Stowell Chapter 1 Beauty there was once a very rich man named Peer who gave his three daughters everything they wanted. I love my daughters. I love presents. Bring us rubies and silks from the market demanded Sophie and Marie, his eldest daughters. Oh, and a statin dress and pearls. Pierre turned to his youngest daughter. Don't you want anything, Beauty? He asked. May I have a rose? asked Beauty. They always seem to die in our garden. I wonder why, said Marie. It's a mystery, added Sophie, and such a shame when you love them so. Peer waved goodbye to his daughters and galloped away on his sleek white horse. As he rode, a thick fog filled the air. Pierre couldn't see the path ahead or even his horse below him. He went on blindly until suddenly the fog rolled back to reveal a towering castle. Pierre gasped. Where am I? Chapter 2 The Beast The horse's hooves clattered up to the castle gates. They opened before him with a ghostly creak. Pierre rode into a courtyard as he raised his hands to knock on the castle door. It swung open. Hello, he called. No one answered. He tried again. Hello. But Pierre only heard his own voice echoing of the stone walls. Is anybody here? What's going on? He murmured, his heart beating faster. Then a mouth-watering smell made him forget his fear. Pierre followed his nose to an enormous feast. He sat down nervously. Where are the guests? He said to himself. A full plate floated over to him and he cried out in surprise. But he was cold and starving and the food smelled so good. I hope no one minds, he thought picking up a silver fork. Invisible hands poured him rich, sweet wine. Feeling full and tired, P 
He rose from the table instantly. A bed appeared before him. Pierre was too exhausted to question it. He just lay down and fell fast asleep. He woke in a beautiful bedroom. A pile of clean clothes sat on a seat by the bed. They were just his size. I must find the owners and thank them, Pierre thought and set out to search the castle corridors. Invisible hands opened all the doors, but he couldn't find a single living person anywhere. Perhaps everyone's outside, Pierre wondered. In the garden he found a beautiful rose bush. As he sniffed the blooms, he remembered his promise to beauty. No one will miss a one rose. The instant Pierre plucked a flower, a huge shadow fell over the rose bushes. He spun around clutching the bloom to his chest. To see a hideous creature before him. Its eyes glittered fiercely. Before Pierre could cry out it grabbed him and pulled him close to its angry face. Chapter 3 Prepare to Die How dare you steal from the beast? demanded the terrifying creature. I gave you food and shelter and this is how you repay me? Thief! I'm so, so sorry, said Pia, trembling all over. The beast glared at him and gave a low growl. I'll pay for the flower, cried Pia desperately. Yes, you'll pay, said the beast. You'll pay with your life. Please, don't harm me, begged Pia. I just wanted a rose for beauty, for my daughter. Daughter? The beast fixed his burning eyes on Pierre. I'll let you live if you send beauty to me. If she refuses, you must return in a week to meet your fate, he declared, or I'll come after you. I can't risk beauty's life. Pia thought. With a heavy heart, he told the beast he would return. Before Pia left, the beast put a ruby bridle on the horse's buzzle. He'll be able to find his way to your home and back, said the beast. The bridle will guide him. I'm home, called Pierre as he came down the path. Beauty ran to him, smiling. How was the trip? Fine, said Pierre. He couldn't bear to tell her the truth. As the week passed, 
appear grew thin and pale. What's wrong, father? Beauty asked. Nothing, he replied. Please don't worry about me. That night Beauty thought she heard him crying. She found him asleep at his desk. The next morning, with a letter in front of him, she picked it up and started to read. Dearest daughters, when you read this letter, I will have left you forever. I took a rose from the garden of the monstrous beast and he has sworn to kill me unless I bring him my youngest daughter. I could never do that to you, Beauty. So I have gone in your place. Farewell, your loving father. Oh no! cried Beauty. This is all my fault. Looking out of the window, Beauty saw her father's horse saddled up ready to go. She knew what she had to do. Quickly and quietly, she scribbled a note for him. Dear Father, I have gone to the beast's castle instead of you. All my love, Beauty. Her father's horse seemed to know the way. He galloped down the twisting paths as if guided by a magic force. As the beast's castle came into view, Beauty gripped the reins in fear. Chapter 4 Beauty and the Beast First, the castle gates creaked open before her. Then, the door to the castle itself this place must be enchanted. Beauty realized she took a deep breath and stepped inside. Beauty tiptoed down a long and dusty corridor until she found an open door. It led into a sweet smelling garden. But as soon as Beauty stepped into the sunlight, she heard a terrible growl. What are you doing here? roared the beast. I'm B -B Beauty, Pia's daughter. She stammered. He sent you to die, did he? The beast growled. Coward, don't say that, said Beauty. She was so angry, she forgot her fear and glared at the beast. You have courage? said the beast, gazing back at her. As he spoke, Beauty was shocked to see great tears forming in his eyes. What's wrong? she asked. Having you here makes me realize 
I've been alone for so long, sniffed the beast. Poor beast, said Beauty, her heart filling with pity. I'll stay with you if you like. The beast grasped her hand, his eyes shining with hope. Thank you, he said gruffly, but you must let my father know I'm safe. The beast strode out to the courtyard and tied a knot to Piers's horse, then sent it on its way. That evening, Beauty and the beast dined together. The beast told Beauty a story about a princess who turned a frog into a prince with a kiss. In return, Beauty told the beast all about her family and life. Well, you're a very good listener, she said. My sisters always interrupt. The beast looked at Beauty very seriously, then knelt before her. I know this is sudden, he said in a low voice. And I know I'm ugly, but will you marry me? I can't, gasped Beauty. I don't even know you very well, said the beast, bowing his head. Good night, Beauty. Your room is next door, he added, and left her alone. Chapter 5 Beauty Explores Beauty dreamed of home and woke wishing she was there. Then as she dressed, she saw a mirror by her bed, peering into it. She was amazed to see her father eating breakfast back at home. A magic mirror! Seeing him safe and well lifted, her spirits, it's time to explore, she decided, and set off down the shadowy corridors. In one room, she saw fairies performing a play on an enchanted stage. In another, she found a library with shelves that seemed to stretch to the sky. Here you will find every book in the world, boomed a voice. Books from both the past and the future. When Beauty went out into the garden, she saw exotic flowers and magical animals. But she didn't see the beast all day. At eight o'clock, a gong rang for dinner. The beast was waiting for Beauty in the dining room. Did you find the mirror? He asked eagerly. I loved it. Thank you. 
Beauty replied, After dinner, the beast went down on one knee again. Marry me, Beauty. Beauty sighed. I'm sorry, Beast. You're very kind, but I don't want to marry you. I thought that might be the answer, said the Beast sadly, and left her alone. That night, Beauty had a strange dream. She was dining with a handsome prince. How can you bear to look at the ugly beast? He asked. He's not ugly inside, said Beauty. But he's a monster, said the prince. How could anyone love a beast? Beauty woke to the sound of birds singing. The prince from her dream had vanished. Is that all he was a dream? Beauty wondered. She spent the day wandering from room to room. The castle seemed empty without the beast beside her. Beauty was trying to choose a book from the library when she noticed a portrait. She couldn't believe her eyes. It was the prince from her dream. At dinner that evening, she asked the beast about him. I dreamed of a prince last night, she said. And then I saw a painting of him in the library. Do you know who he is? I know him! said the beast, but I haven't seen him for years. For the rest of the meal, the beast refused to talk more about the prince. After they finished, he asked her to marry him again. I like you, but I don't love you. Beauty said softly, I'm sorry, but I want to marry you. The beast sighed and said good night. The next morning, Beauty watched her family in her mirror. She missed them more than ever. At dinner that evening, she hardly ate a thing. What's the matter? The beast asked her with a worried frown. I'm homesick, said Beauty. The beast pulled a ring from his pocket. Oh, beast, I still won't marry you, she said quickly. The beast shook his head. This isn't a wedding ring. It's magic. It will take you back to your father.
But you must promise me you'll return in two weeks, he went on. I promise, said Beauty. Oh, thank you, Beast. Keep it safe in your pocket. When you're ready to return, put the ring on your bedside table, he told her. Beauty nodded. She put on the ring and the room melted away. She felt herself falling, falling, until suddenly she was standing on solid ground. Again! She was back at home and her father was staring at her open-mouthed. Oh, father, she cried, throwing her arms around him. Chapter 6, Tricked The beast is really very sweet. Beauty's father was overjoyed to see her. Unlike her sisters, when they heard she had to return in two weeks, they hatched a secret plan. If we make her stay longer, the beast will be angry. With any luck, he might even eat her, said Marie with a sly smile. With little beauty gone, we'll have father and his fortune all to ourselves, added Sophie. So the sisters started being very sweet and loving to Beauty. I love you, Beauty. More cake? Beauty was surprised at the change in them. They must have really missed me, she thought. The two weeks flew by. But Beauty kept thinking of the beast. Was he lonely without her? When the time came for her to return her sisters, burst into noisy sobs. We can't live without you, they howled. If you loved us, you'd stay, said Sophie clutching Beauty's hands. Reluctantly, Beauty stayed. Until one night, she dreamed she saw the beast lying in his garden under a rose bush. Beauty woke with a start. Something's wrong, she realised. I must go to him. Chapter 7 Dying Beauty quickly put the ring on her bedside table. A cloud of swirling smoke surrounded her. The next instant, she vanished. Beauty was back in the garden. The beast was lying under the rose bush, just as in her dream. Oh no! Beast, whispered Beauty. 
Kneeling down beside him, the beast struggled to open his eyes. Is that you, Beauty? He asked. I'm dying! No! cried Beauty, horrified. Why? What happened? She stroked his velvety face and kissed him. You can't die. Please, beast. I love you. Don't die. There was a blinding flash and a deafening bang. The beast disappeared. A second later, there was another brighter flash and an even louder bang. Kneeling before her was a handsome prince. You were in my dream! And in the painting! cried Beauty. Who are you? What happened to my beast? She asked. Her mind was spinning. The prince smiled. I am your beast. Many years ago, he explained an angry fairy turned me into a beast because I refused to marry her. Only the love of a beautiful girl could make me human again. But why were you dying? asked Beauty. The fairy said, if I loved a girl who did not love me, I would die of a broken heart, the prince replied. You don't need to be afraid, said Beauty. I do love you. Beauty and the prince were married the next day in a church filled with roses. Beauty's sisters left early in bad tempers. Why does she get to marry a prince? It's not fair. Life isn't fair, said a tiny voice. It was the fairy who had cursed the prince. Your sister broke my spell, she said. But at least I can give you exactly what you deserve. What? yelped the sisters. As you have hearts of stone, the fairy declared, waving her wand. That's what you'll be forever! Then feeling much better, she flew off to steal some wedding cake. I hope you enjoyed listening to my book. Thank you.